Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the refresher course in mathematics uh, held at Ramanujan College, Rajadi University. So this is my second talk. In this talk, I will be talking about introduction to mathematical models in epidemiology. In the first talk, I covered the introduction to mathematical models in ecology. Now, uh, in this particular talk, uh, I'll be talking about the basic mathematical models which are being used in epidemics uh, in order to predict the future of the epidemics, how various uh, parameters involved in the ep epidemic influence the growth of the epidemic, and whether our epidemic is uh, highly spreadable or it can be controlled over a period of time. So all these things uh, uh, we'll be discussing in this particular uh, talk. So uh, to begin with, let us first define uh, what do we actually understand by the term epidemiology. So epidemiology is basically a branch of science which uh, discusses all the factors which determine the presence or absence of a certain disease in a population. And uh, it is also, we can say, it is also a study of spread of the disease, uh, how this particular disease is spreading in space and time uh, in relation to various factors which might affect the uh, spread of that particular disease. Uh, so why uh, it is uh, important to study epidemiology or why uh, at all uh, we talk about epidemiology uh, is the reason being that there are certain disease uh, in, in, in the population where uh, there are various factors that can actually increase the rate of the disease or decrease the rate of the spread of the disease. So epidemiology actually helps us to understand what will be the future, uh, future of that particular disease or what will be the dynamics of that disease, whether it is going to spread very fast or there are uh, certain factors in the, uh, in, in the population which if controlled can actually control the epidemic. So all these things actually, we, in order to study all these things, we have to first understand the science of epidemiology. So that's why it is very important to understand uh, uh, the mathematical epidemiology. So uh, mathematics has a very important role to play here uh, because recently, uh, so actually since a long time, there are several models, mathematical models, which have been used very widely in epidemiology to understand the future prospect of any epidemic. So if anyone uh, interested uh, to get in get more details of mathematical epidemiology other than what I'll be covering in this uh, talk, then uh, one can see uh, these two books which are uh, very popular and very good books. Uh, first one is by Hester Beek and uh, or O. Diekman and the second one is by Maya Marcheva. So yeah, so this is for the detail, uh, uh, details anyone interested in. The mathematical epidemiology. So let us first uh, see what this uh, epidemiology, how it evolved in history. And uh, for this, uh, the first name that comes into uh, mind is Hippocrates, who was actually a physician, and it was he, he was actually the first epidemiologist. Uh, so he uh, wrote three books entitled Epidemic One, Epidemic Three, and uh, on airs, waters, and places, attempted to describe. Uh, so he attempted to describe diseases from a rational perspective. So before him, uh, there was more uh, super uh, my mythological and uh, and sus uh, superstitious beliefs about uh, diseases. So he was the first one who actually gave a scientific explanation to the disease, and he was called as the first epidemiologist. Later, uh, the detailed data study on the disease. Uh, was done by John Grant in 1620 to 1674. So in his book, uh, Natural and Particle Observations Made Upon the Bills of Mortality, he has uh, compiled a very large number of data in that decade as well. So the Bills of Mortality, the book that he, uh, he has uh, written, it has a weekly records of numbers and causes of death in London. He basically analyzed various uh, uh, factors that uh, that was causing death and he gave a method of estimating the comparative risk of dying from various diseases. 
then uh, the first mathematical model was uh, for understanding uh, for uh, epidemiology it was given by uh, daniel bernoulli and the mathematical model the first mathematical model that he proposed it was of smallpox now uh, if, before understanding uh, the basic mathematical models in epidemiology uh, first of all ha uh, let us have uh, a little bit detail of the background so uh, we study the epidemic in a closed population most of the mathematical models that we will be studying is studied in a closed population so in general uh, the population of hosts they show demogra demographic turnover what does that mean by demographic turnover so it means uh, the old individuals disappear by death new individuals appear by birth and also individuals increasing or decreasing due to the process of migration so all these things come into uh, this demographic turnover so any demographic process it has its own characteristic time scale uh, for humans uh, it is of order 1 to 10 years so the time scale for any disease infectious disease is usually very short for example uh, in for influenza uh, this is in uh, in the order of weeks so in such cases we actually choose to ignore the demographic turnover this means uh, we ignore uh, the emigration and immigration uh, and any change in the population due to that happening in the model while modeling the uh, any any epidemic using our mathematical model so in that case what do we uh, we call that particular population to be closed so uh, we consider a closed population and uh, uh, then we uh, we ignore the immigration and emigration so we consider a closed population and then thereafter we uh, study the uh, the disease in that particular uh, population now let us suppose uh, we have a closed population and we assume that a certain disease causing organism or patho pathogen has uh, encroached that particular population it has entered into that particular closed population all right now the questions that uh, may come into our, into our mind is first can this cause an epidemic so when one disease causing organism has uh, been introduced in that particular closed population can this Uh, then can this break into an epidemic or will it just remain as any ordinary disease second question that uh, we can ask is if it can happen uh, if it can break into an epidemic then with what rate does the number of infected hosts increases during the rise of the epidemic the third question that can come in our mind is what proportion of the population will ultimately have experienced infection so uh, these uh, questions are very relevant and very important to address when we are talking about introduction of a pathogen in a closed population so what are the prospects that can happen what are the, what is the future of the epidemic whether it is an epidemic or it's not an epidemic so in order to answer uh, these questions we'll get in in a more detail of the basic mathematical models for any epidemic and Uh, the basic methodology uh, that we uh, follow that in in a certain closed population are the following so first of all we have to uh, formulate certain assumptions for the transmission for many disease transmission can take takes place either when the two hosts contact each other uh, by several means or it also depends upon their uh, interaction so sometimes the contact can be a little bit vague so there are three step protocols that we follow in order to uh, study an epidemic in a closed population first is we first model the contact process so how the hosts are contacting that is the first step in the modeling second is to model the mixing of susceptibles and infected population that is to specify what fraction of contacts of an infected population are there with the susceptible population given the population composition in terms of susceptible and infected so this means uh, after modeling the contact process the second step is we check 
how the susceptible and infected populations are mixed together, how they are interacting with each other, what uh, uh, laws are they following. That is your second step. Third is to specify the probability of contact between the infected and the susceptibles, which can actually lead to the transmission of the disease. So this is another uh, thing that we must keep into mind is the probability of contact. What At what uh, rate is the contact possible between the infected and the susceptible individuals. Now, uh, so this is the three step pro protocol that we follow for uh, modeling any epidemic. Now uh, in a closed population in particular. So first of uh, so then we come to various mathematical models which are also known as compartmental models. So what is a compartmental model? A compartmental model is a type of mathematical model uh, described by a set of mathematical equations which explains how individuals in different compartments interact with within a population. So by here uh, by different compartments we actually mean uh, the different uh, groups of individuals or different set of individuals of one type. For example, when I talk about uh, susceptible or exposed a compartment, so here exposed compartment I mean it consists of all those uh, individuals who are exposed to certain disease. So that will, con that will include one particular compartment. Similarly, infected compartment, recovered compartment and so on. Now, the compartments of the model can either flow between each other or they can interact. So by uh, saying that they can flow between each other, the, when I say that uh, the compartment, the individuals, the compartments of the model, uh, they can flow between uh, another compartment, I mean that uh, for instance live individuals can flow to a dead compartment with a certain rate. So that, uh, by that I mean it's uh, it's a flow between one compartment to another compartment or they can interact. So interaction also for example the any interaction between the susceptible and exposed or exposed and infected what the this interaction if we incorporate in the model we call it as a just in simple interaction between the individuals of two compartments. Now uh, there are various compartmental models uh, in epidemiology uh, which have been uh, since a long time with, uh, they are used in order to model uh, different epidemics. So here we will start with the basic SI uh, model. So we will try to understand uh, some of the basic SI, SEIR and several other compartmental models which exist in the literature. Okay. Now uh, the rate of flow between the compartments and the interaction rate between the compartments, they are known as parameters of the mathematical models. Just now I, I, I explained in the previous slide that, uh, uh, that for any two compartments in a compartmental model, either there can be flow or there can be interaction. And uh, if we consider both of them, any of them actually, so then they are known as parameters of the model. Now, uh, for example, here we can see beta. Beta is the rate of uh, rate of interaction between the susceptible and infected individuals. So basically susceptible is one compartment, infected is another compartment and beta is the rate at which the susceptible individuals interact with in, uh, infected individuals and the susceptible gets, gets converted to the infected population. Now, uh, during the formulation of these models, the population under study is divided into different mutually exclusive classes. So this is something uh, that is uh, an, uh, an important uh, point that all these classes, they are mutually exclusive in nature. Now there are also, uh, as I mentioned, some standard mathematical models. One of the uh, standard mathematical models is SI model, then this is SI uh, model with the death rate incorporated here, delta i. So here uh, there is a conversion of s to i at the rate of beta and here, uh, uh, sorry it was not death rate. So here i gets converted to s again. This means once the population of the infected population is recovered, it goes back to the susceptible population again at the rate of delta. 
Now uh, the next uh, standard model is SIR model also known as Susceptible Infected Recovered Model. So it was proposed by uh, Carmack McHenry and uh, it is one of the uh, simplest yet very efficient uh, epidemic model uh, studied in epidemiology, mathematical epidemiology. So in order to understand what is this SIR model, we will have to first uh, define uh, the various compartments in this SIR model. So there are three compartments in this SIR model, S, I and R. So by S we mean uh, susceptible in population, I is the uh, infected compartment and R is the uh, compartment consisting of removed population. So uh, susceptible population uh, by the term susceptible we mean it's comprise, it comprises of those individuals which can contract the infection and can become infected. Uh, the infected uh, compartment on the other hand includes uh, those individuals which are capable of transmitting the disease to the susceptible population and the removed population R uh, is a compartment which includes those individuals which have uh, contracted the disease and it has either died or became permanently immune once recovered or have been isolated. So uh, that is how this delta I was also coming here in uh, here I. So it has either recovered as it has gone back to the susceptible class. Now assumptions uh, which are involved in the formulation of an SIR model are the following. So first, first assumption is that the total population remains constant. So as we uh, discussed earlier as well, this population is considered to be closed. So for this SIR model, the population is closed. Now uh, the second is the number of uh, susceptible individuals who contracted infection from an infected individual per unit of time at a given time t, it is directly proportional to the total number of susceptible individuals with the proportional coefficient beta, which is also known as transmission coefficient. Now, the individuals from the infected compartment are moved to recovered uh, compartment at the rate proportional to the number of infected individuals, that is uh, gamma gamma into i. Now here gamma is your recovery rate coefficient and it is also assumed that the recovered individuals gain permanent immunity. So uh, with these assumptions this is uh, the basic SIR model uh, uh, without vital dynamics. So here um, by the term vital dynamics I mean that we are not considering the death, death and the uh, birth in the population given population. So based on the above assumptions, so the model that particular, uh, takes a mathematical form is uh, given here. So here dsdt is equal to minus beta si. So this means the susceptible population uh, gets into the infected compartment by at the rate of beta. So that's why it is coming here as minus beta si. Now this is infected compartment and this is di dt that is beta si minus gamma. I. So here there is a growth of infected population due to the interaction with susceptible populations and uh, minus gamma i. So here this uh, at, at the rate of gamma the individuals in the infected class gets recovered and they go to the recovered class. So recovered class, uh, class uh, growth rate is gamma times i. Now uh, there are some uh, modify, mo modified form of SIR models. So first one is SIR. Uh, SIS model. So this is here we can see it is as, it's same as SIR model other than that uh, there is just one uh, extra arrow here that tells that individuals from the recovered class goes to the susceptible class and, and the rate at which it goes is uh, delta. So basically they again become susceptible to the disease after recovery. And uh, here uh, the, the another modified form of SIR model is SIRI model where we can see there is a movement from the recovered class to infected class again at the rate of delta. And uh, when we consider the SIR model with the vital dynamics then we consider their death rate each of the death rate of each of the compartment that is uh, shown here as minus, uh, mu s mu i and mu r which is natural death rate. Now uh, another model uh, is uh, in, in the literature that is uh, being studied is 
SCIR model. So what is uh, so here we actually uh, introduce a new class of uh, uh, a new compartment uh, of the disease. So here this is called this is exposed population or E. So the exposed compartment consists of population which is exposed to the occurrence of uh, vital event. For example, uh, the total population in the case of death, uh, etc. So this by in introducing exposed class in the mathematical model SIR we get a new type of mathematical model to study any epidemic that is SEIR model. So this SEIR model uh, even this can be used in uh, those types of diseases where the population is exposed to the uh, disease or the pathogen and uh, it's, it's still they are not showing the symptoms. So one of the best examples can be the uh, one of the best examples can be the coronavirus that we see these days. So, uh, so coronavirus is there. Uh, the population is exposed to the pathogen, although it doesn't show any symptom, and they can be put into the exposed class. Now, uh, to include the uh, situation, so during the completion of the SIR mathematical model. It is assumed that the susceptible individuals immediately become infectious once contracted infection. However, in the case of SER model, it is used in those types of disease where there is a small period where the exposed population, uh, the susceptible population, although exposed to the infection, do not show the symptoms. So the mathematical form of this SER model can be uh, presented like this. So here uh, ds dt is equal to minus beta si, de dt is beta i minus sigma e and, and uh, di dt is sigma e minus gamma i and then dr dt is gamma i. So here this in this exposed class uh, there is increase in the population with from uh, the infected class that is beta i and minus sigma e. So some of the population from the exposed class is going out from here and join the infected class. So the flow diagram of SCR model can be uh, shown something like this here and uh, we can again assume uh, there are situations or there are diseases where the recovered class, uh, the individuals from recovered class can again become susceptible and uh, this is one of the best uh, ways to understand uh, such a process is uh, the Currently, the COVID is going on, so here the once they are recovered, an individual recovered from COVID can again become susceptible. So, here this is your modified SEIRS model, and it can model diseases like COVID and many other similar diseases or epidemic. Now, uh, uh, before getting into details of any mathematical uh, model in, of epidemiology. Uh, we need to define a uh, few of the important terminologies that are being used in studying any epidemiological model. So first one is the contact rate. So the total number of individuals contacted by an infectious individual per unit of time is termed as contact rate of the infection. And in general all contacts with infectious individuals do not result in an infection. So then comes your adequate contact rate. What is adequate contact rate? Suppose that the probability of infections by each contact is beta naught and un is the contact rate. So here n represents the population size and the concentration. Then the function defined as the product beta naught un, this gives the adequate contact rate of the epidemic and in particular it describes the infection strength of the uh, infect, infected individuals. So uh, that is uh, another term. Then uh, during the formation of the compartmental epidemic model, the population can be divided into mutually exclusive compartments as mentioned earlier as well. So among all these compartments, diseases are transmitted only to individuals belonging to susceptible compartment when they come in contact with the individuals of infected compartment. So in that case, uh, uh, there comes this infection rate. So what is infection rate? If the total population is n, then the fraction of the susceptibles in the population is s by n. So from this we can obtain the mean adequate contact rate of an infected individual to a susceptible 
as beta naught un s upon n. So this rate is termed as infection rate. So what is infection rate? It is nothing but it is the mean of the adequate contact rate that we obtain. Then uh, next one is the incidence. So uh, how can you define incidence? So the total new infected uh, infected individuals uh, infected individuals of uh, in the infected compartment per unit of time is known as incidence of the disease and mathematically we can write it as beta naught u which is function of n times si by n. Now there are two types of incidences frequently used during the disease modeling. One is bilinear incidence and the other one is standard incidence. So what, uh, what is bilinear incidence? So if the contact rate is proportional to the total population size, uh, then the incidence is beta si and this type of incidence is called bilinear incidence or simple mass action incidence. Now uh, what is the other type of incidence is known as standard incidence. So how can I define standard in incidence? So if the contact rate is a constant C, so in this case the incidence, incidence becomes beta Si upon N where beta is equal to beta naught C. So this type of incidence is known as standard incidence. So the next terminology that we come across in uh, mathematical epidemiology is average lifespan. So what do we understand by average lifespan? So suppose we consider a small population size uh, of uh, population of size n and uh, we suppose that individuals uh, in this population n have an age a after that uh, mu is a proportion of the individuals who die out in that population per unit of time. So uh, this mu is known as natural death rate coefficient. Now if we see the uh, growth rate in this population, so uh, with respect to their time t which is a here is age. So d and da is it can be written as minus mu n. So uh, from here we get uh, solving we get n is equal to n naught e to the power minus mu a. Uh, that is e to the power minus mu a becomes n upon n naught. Now, uh, the probability of death of the population uh, for the age interval 0 to a is 1 minus e to the power minus mu a. Now if we take the uh, probability density function for this population, so it comes out to be uh, uh, of the form something like this. So the mathematical expectation uh, of tau can be given by uh, integration of this a mu e to the power minus mu a from 0 to infinity and when we simplify we get 1 upon mu. So this is your average lifespan. So using the mean of mathematical expectation we deduce that 1 upon mu is the average death age of the population which is also known as average lifespan. Now the next uh, is waiting time so for an average infection age. So the inverse of the probability of transmission of infection is termed as average infection age and it is also known as waiting time. Uh, next, uh, one of the very uh, important term that is used in uh, uh, mathematical epidemiology is basic reproduction number. So what do you understand by basic reproduction number? So basic reproduction number can be defined as average number of uh, secondary infections that an infected individual can produce during his or her entire period of infection. So uh, this means suppose uh, this blue uh, person is an infected person when he is introduced to a to any population of susceptibles as uh, so a number of infections that he can cause in during his entire infectious period that is your reproduction number for that particular disease. Uh, so in order to better understand it uh, uh, we can see this example. So here this is uh, an infected person in red and he can actually in fact infect two people uh, in the population and further each of these infected per, uh, person can infect two more person at a time. So this gives rise to R value of R0 to be equal to 2. Now uh, depending upon the value of R0, uh, it can determine whether a given disease will turn into an epidemic or it will subside. So for example here I said that R0 is equal to 2. This means we can clearly see that from one person this uh, uh, infected person we are having so many infected 
persons. So uh, whenever your R0, it is greater than 1, this means the pathogen is able to invade, invade the susceptible population and uh, that particular uh, pathogen can turn the disease into a epidemic. Whereas if the value of re basic reproduction number R0 is less than 1, then we can say that the uh, infection might not turn into an epidemic and we can also predict that the infection will die out of the population after a certain period of time. Now, uh, there are uh, uh, several techniques that we use to calculate the reproduction number. One of the uh, famous uh, methods to calculate the reproduction number is known as next generation method or next generation technique. So there are uh, uh, some references, important references which can be used to understand this particular method in more detail. So here, uh, suppose that, uh, the, so I'll explain this method in very brief here. So suppose a given uh, disease transmission model with non-negative initial conditions can be written as given in equation number 1. So here uh, xi dot is equal to f of xi that is equal to capital Fix minus Vix. Now this capital Fix, this represents the rate of appearance of new infections in any compartment i, where i is equal to 1 to n. So this is rate of appearance of new infections. Now uh, what is this vi? Vi is the difference between the rate of transfer of individuals out of the compartment termed as vi minus and minus vi plus which is uh, uh, the rate of transfer of individuals into the compartment i. Now uh, it is also assumed that these functions which we have used in equation 1, they are at least twice continuously differentiable in each variable. Now, if those functions uh, involved in equation 1, they satisfy these 5 axioms, then we proceed to this uh, technique further and we calculate the derivative of f and v. So, uh, derivative of f and uh, v, sorry, this, is, uh, this should be v. So, derivative of f and v, it gives us f 0, 0, 0 and this is v 0, j 3, j 4. So, j 3, j 4 are uh, the matrices associated with the transition term of the model. So, here f is basically this, ter this term f and this term v are the important terms which we will be using in this uh, technique. So, we will calculate the value of f which is uh, non-negative m matrix and v which is non-similar m matrix. And once we calculate f and v, then we get the next generation matrix as a product of f and inverse of this matrix v, that is fv inverse. Now the entries of fv inverse uh, is the expected number of new infections in any compartment i produced by the infected individuals originally introduced into compartment k. So once we obtain this product fv inverse, then we obtain its spectral radius and that will give us the next generation matrix. So uh, that, that will give us the value of the reduction number R0. So the spectral radius of every inverse is giving us R0. Now uh, we will see an example here uh, to understand this next uh, generation technique in uh, brief. So here uh, this is an SEIR model. Uh, then in this SEIR model we obtain first the disease free equivalent point. Uh, given by uh, here as e not equal to 1 0 0 0. So for uh, this uh, days free uh, equivalent point we obtain the transmission matrix F and the transition matrix V. So this these two matrices F is known as the uh, uh, transition matrix and V is your transmission matrix. So this transmission matrix F and, uh, and transition matrix V are calculated here from this equation. So basically we calculate F and V from these two equations D DT and DI DT because these are the only two infection states of the model and uh, not S and R. So we use these two equations from here we obtain the value of F and V. So the F comes out to be B naught V. So basically uh, 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 this B naught is coming from here B naught S E and this uh, beta is coming from here beta S I. And uh, here, um, then, then from 0, 0 is coming from this equation, 
So there is no interaction between I and E. There is no term of interaction between I and E in this equation and uh, I and S in this equation. That's why it's coming out to be 0, 0. Now, uh, similarly, uh, here, this V is, we calculate from these two equations, E and I. So V, alpha plus alpha 1 plus mu is coming from here, alpha plus alpha 1 plus mu. And similarly, the other terms we are getting from E and I, so the equations of D, 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 T and D, I, D, T. So once we get the value of F and V, then we calculate uh, F, V inverse and from here, the R0 can be obtained as I mentioned here as a spectral radius of uh, FV inverse rho FV inverse which uh, for this particular example we are obtaining something like this. So uh, uh, these are, uh, so uh, we discussed some, discussed some of the basic uh, mathematical models in literature and uh, the terminologies that are being used to study any epidemiological model. Now we will consider an example uh, that is uh, uh, we have worked upon, our research group has worked upon. So this is a, a compartmental model uh, which we used for uh, finding out the future course of COVID-19 in Italy. So I won't be going into details of this particular problem, rather I'll just uh, stick to the uh, modeling part and a few, uh, just a few results uh, to understand how do we interpret uh, the results in a uh, uh, model in epidemiology. So here uh, we have considered an SEIR model, a standard SEIR model and uh, since the reason why we have considered here SEIR model is uh, that there is a latency period uh, for this COVID-19 disease that is uh, ra that ranges up to 14 days. This means up to 14 days uh, the individual is exposed to the pathogen although does not show any symptom. So we can categorize such individuals into the class of exposed. So as I as we defined earlier, exposed class is nothing but it is collection of those individuals which already got infected but they are not showing any symptom of the disease. And uh, then uh, with this assumption, we uh, define our mathematical model something like this. So this is our uh, deterministic model. So here uh, we can see the movement of uh, the uh, individuals from one compartment to another, which can be uh, seen from this flow chart. So here uh, this SEIR model here, uh, we can see that this uh, individual from the receptor class move to the exposed class at the rate of beta i plus beta naught e upon n. And uh, similarly, uh, from the exposed class, the individuals are moving to recovered class at the rate alpha 1 and so on. So now uh, this is a mathematical model, it's a simple SEIR model which, are, which is uh, being modified for a particular uh, epidemic of COVID-19 and that too in a particular domain that we, a special domain that we considered as Italy. So we studied this, this mathematical model. And uh, we first, uh, for that purpose, uh, since this is a model of uh, uh, current scenario which we are going through, so what uh, to make this particular mathematical model uh, more realistic, what uh, we have done is that we have estimated each of the parameters involved in the mathematical model. So the estimated value is presented here for each of the parameters. And uh, with that estimated parameter, what one can do is that one can uh, uh, see the future course of, the, uh, of that particular pandemic. So uh, we did the, we first did the data fitting of that particular mathematical model and we used the real data uh, for the active cases of, uh, uh, active cases in Italy uh, for a certain period of uh, March to May. And uh, we saw that our data, our, our mathematical model that we formulated here in equation number four that uh, fitted very accurately to the real data. So here the dotted red dots that we see is the official data seen uh, taken from the WHO site and the blue line is uh, the simulated data. So basically this is showing our model uh, uh, simulation from the mathematical model. So we see that our uh, data actually fitted, uh, mathematical model actually fitted the data very accurately 
and then uh, one can use uh, such mathematical model for finding out the future course of that particular pandemic. So we try to uh, predict this till November uh, 2020. So this is a study which was done last year in the month of March. So uh, so it's an old study, but uh, one can use it very uh, very clearly uh, to predict the future course of the pandemic. Uh, similarly, uh, we can obtain the uh, basic reproduction number to get an estimate of the future course of the pandemic. So the, uh, the method explained earlier, that is next generation uh, technique can be used. So for that, we obtain the uh, transmission matrix and uh, the transition matrix F and B. And uh, then we use uh, those two matrices. Uh, we obtain the product FB inverse. From there, we obtain the spectral radius and uh, that is how we have obtained the value of R0 for this particular mathematical model. So once we get the expression for R0, then it is quite easy to obtain uh, its accurate exact value using the real data available. So uh, the value of R0 that we obtained for in the case of Italy was 2.0683, which was pretty high and was showing that uh, which is greater than 1 and uh, it shows it's a case of epidemic. Then uh, we also uh, uh, calculated the value of this R0 for uh, the small providences of, of Italy. So we considered four providences here and this is uh, Lombardia, Veneto, Emilia, Romagna and Piemonte. And we calculated uh, the basic reproduction number for each of these um, states and we saw that uh, Lombardia has the highest value of 2.1382 and uh, uh, real data um, also tells the same thing that the the scenario of this epidemic in Lombardia was the worst among all uh, these uh, three, four states. Uh, further, uh, one can uh, study the effect of various parameters on the change in the reproduction number, which actually tells us how uh, good or bad that particular pandemic is. So here, once you change the value of theta and alpha, then uh, we can see that R0 is increasing over time. So uh, that tells and also uh, the change in the uh, value of theta as it increases the uh, the steep is quite high. So this actually shows that uh, theta is much more sensitive uh, parameter in this disease and it can actually uh, has a significant role to play in the control of the disease. Similarly, other parameters can be summarized with plot and uh, its effect on the R0 can be seen. For example, alpha and alpha 2 here, alpha, beta, beta naught and beta. We plotted these uh, parameters and we saw its uh, effect on the R0. And we can, uh, uh, similarly, we can interpret it that as your beta changes. Uh, so where, wherever this parameter changes and there is a uh, steep rise in the value of R0 uh, or if there is uh, no, there is not much significant change in the value of R0 for another parameter. So we can completely say that beta is a much more uh, significant factor and it can uh, influence the disease uh, in a relatively significant ma manner. Now uh, we also calculate the endemic equilibrium point uh, for any disease uh, because understanding the nature of the endemic equilibrium point uh, has a significant uh, uh, contribution in understanding a, a given pandemic. So what is an endemic equilibrium point? It is uh, the state when the disease cannot be completely eradicated but it remains still remains in the population. That is your endemic equilibrium state. And for any disease to persist in the population, the exposed class and the infected class must not be zero at the equilibrium state. So this means E and I, it has to be there. It, sh it should be non-zero in, in order for any disease to exist or in order to determine the endemic state. So uh, we used our equations, we created the uh, steady state, to see. we made it, the, we obtained the steady state equation from our more mathematical model and we solved it and we obtained the value of S star, E star, I star, R star, which actually eventually gave us the value of the endemic equilibrium point E star. So here E star uh, uh, is given by this, R star is this, uh, which is in form of I star, then this is your S star and I star. So there exists a unique endemic equilibrium point for our proposed model system as obtained from here. Now once we obtain the endemic equilibrium point, we check the stability of the endemic equilibrium point. 
So uh, we uh, we also uh, the disease free treatment point that we have obtained. We also check the stability of uh, of the disease free treatment point as well. So the disease free treatment point of the proposed model system is locally asymptotically stable only when R naught is less than equal to one. Whenever uh, this R naught is greater than one, then the disease free treatment point becomes unstable. Now, if R naught is less than or equal to one, then the uh, disease free treatment point in this case is also globally asymptotically stable. Another theorem uh, that we obtained here in our study was when R naught is greater than one, then uh, what happens to the stability of the endemic equivalent point? So we saw that the endemic equivalent point E star is locally asymptotically stable when R naught is greater than one, and these two inequalities are being satisfied. Now uh, another uh, uh, aspect in any epidemic uh, study of any uh, epidemic mathematically is understanding if there is any backward bifurcation in the uh, system or not. So why this study of backward bifurcation is important is in case there is existent, uh, there is any backward bifurcation in the mathematical uh, model, then the uh, epidemic does control of the epidemic becomes very, very difficult and uh, making R naught less than one is not a sufficient condition in that case in order to control the disease. So uh, we investigated the backward bifurcation in the in the mathematical model, and uh, we saw that there existed backward bifurcation in the system whenever uh, this beta beta naught is greater than alpha plus alpha one plus theta plus two mu. So uh, uh, this actually uh, uh, points us to the fact that the condition of this COVID nineteen was uh, uh, have been pretty bad and its control has been very difficult. One of the reasons we can uh, point out to is uh, the existence of backward bifurcation in the system. Now another uh, mathematical model which we can uh, uh, the mathematical model which we can uh, understand uh, in this uh, uh, mathematical epidemiology is uh, one which we have uh, studied, it is to study the impact of environmental pollution on the spread of waterborne diseases. So here we consider uh, the total population to be n at any time t and we divide this population n into a uh, susceptible population which is not under the effect of uh, pollution, then another one is a uh, susceptible population which is under the effect of pollution which is x2 and the infected pop, uh, population y. And then we further consider a B to be uh, the pathogen population which is spreading the disease. So with these four compartments, uh, we, uh, we define our mathematical model something like this. So this is uh, dx1 dt, uh, dx2 dt, dy dt and dv dt. The flow of the uh, individuals in this uh, mathematical model can be shown here as uh, represented in this uh, diagram. So uh, further, so uh, this is how uh, we can actually uh, consider a uh, compartmental model to understand any waterborne disease and to understand various factors. Uh, of, for example, here we have assumed the environmental pollution as one of the factors and its role in the spread of the waterborne disease. Another uh, mathematical model that we have uh, studied uh, in, in our group is uh, effect of pollution in the cholera modeling. In particular, we have considered one particular waterborne disease that is cholera and uh, we have tried to see what is the effect of pollution on, in the uh, cholera model, in the disease, uh, waterborne disease cholera in particular. So for this purpose, we formulate a deterministic compartmental model and uh, here uh, we consider we divide our total population n into uh, mutually exclusive compartments again x1 which is the susceptible population which is not under the effect of pollution and x2 which is the susceptible population which is under the impact of pollution and the infected population y and uh, b is the density of the pathogen population that we have considered. Now here uh, we have considered both the modes that is human to human and environment to human transmission during the model formulation. So here we have uh, x1, x2, y and b. So here uh, also we have only four compartments but that mode of transmission 
is much more complex than it was considered in this particular mathematical model where uh, we uh, only considered the mode of transmission to be from water to human and not the human to human interaction so uh, the flow of the uh, the different individuals from the different compartments can be shown from this uh, transition diagram as presented here and so what we can see is that uh, we can understand several uh, factors which can actually control the epidemic with the help of mathematical epi epidemiology uh, and for that purpose we use uh, the mathematical models and the different um, techniques that are available to understand such compartmental models and uh, uh, so what do we do we begin with the simplest model and we try to discover everything about it we try to see what are the different uh, environmental factors that actually affect that particular pandemic and we try to incorporate it in the compartmental model and uh, so in the specific case of mathematical epidemiology for decades medical and public health officials have carefully conducted surveillance of infection diseases and uh, we can use those data uh, it can be used to understand the transmission dynamics of any particular disease which we are interested in studying with the help of mathematical epidemiology so and that is all thank you